Is it time for the Red Sox to shut down Rafael Devers for the season? That question and more on today's Locked on Red Sox. You are Locked on Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlbut, former ESPN social media associate and current host of the Boston Balling Podcast as well. And I am here to bring you the latest in all things Boston Red Sox, Monday through Friday, straight to your favorite podcast feed. And the best part is it's all completely free, so you might as well check it out because Locked On is your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Happy Tuesday and welcome to the show. It is very much isn't the happiest of Tuesdays, I'd say, that us Red Sox fans have had this season as the team did drop another game on Monday night, 4-1 to one against the Mets. This is the third straight game in which the Red Sox only scored one run. And we can blame the errors all we want. I mean, the Red Sox made two errors in the game, and the sloppy defense has been a problem all year. And Brian Bayo started but didn't look the sharpest on Monday night. He went five innings, giving up seven hits and four earned runs in that span. He did strike out four, but that really doesn't tell the whole story because, yes, he was charged with all four runs. So it wasn't a quality start for him, but his defense behind him certainly did not help him out much at all. So that definitely should be considered here as a factor when evaluating the start that Bayo had was that he did not have very many strong defensive plays being made behind him in the field. So All of that is really bad, and if this Red Sox team played somewhat better defense, even just a little bit, then they would probably have five to six more wins right now. I mean, their defense has cost them lots of runs this season, and it's a mess. It very much is a mess, and the infield was already going to be affected as soon as Trevor Story got injured because he just made the infield defense a lot better. So when he does return, having him back from a defensive standpoint is going to be super helpful for this Red Sox team, but All of those factors come into play. However, the offense just has not been hitting lately. Three straight days with scoring one run is not ideal. And I'm going to be touching a little bit more on the overall performance of the offense a little bit later on today's show. And also going to be getting people a little bit excited about what's to come in the future for this Red Sox team, seeing as their playoff hopes are getting slimmer and slimmer. But the burning question that Red Sox fans have right now about this team is, Honestly, is it realistic for them to make the playoffs at this point? They have gotten lucky because the teams that are right in front of them in the Royals and Twins in the wild card standings have not been playing well either. So they remain four and a half games back in the wild card. But the problem is that the other teams are losing, but the Red Sox are unable to take advantage. So it doesn't really matter that the teams ahead of them are playing poorly right now because so are the Red Sox. And it's irritating that they've had opportunities to close the gap significantly in the wild card standings and they haven't been able to do so. And one key player for this Red Sox team that absolutely would be needed if they were going to make a playoff run is Raphael Devers signed a massive extension with the team. He's here to stay. He is the cornerstone piece that this Red Sox team is going to build around moving forward. But he has been dealing with 
some nagging pain this season in his shoulder, and it never really got resolved. They've had him miss some stints throughout the season this year, and he had missed quite a few games at a time earlier on. But then he came back, and the issue hadn't seemed to be resolved. So because of this, the Red Sox are continuing to push him, but he is playing through pain at the moment. And the problem with all of this is if he has this nagging shoulder issue that's been going on since spring training and the Red Sox haven't been able to get it under wraps, then that could mean a more permanent injury for him down the road and he won't be able to be the player that the Red Sox need him to be in the future. And with this whole wild card situation right now and the Red Sox not necessarily being a team that looks like they can make a very serious run, it's hard to imagine keeping Devers in the lineup every day as a good decision. Because if they continue to make him push through this shoulder pain that he clearly hasn't gotten resolved, and he pushes through and plays until the end of the season and the Red Sox don't make the playoffs, then it'll end up having been kind of a waste that they used him as much as they did. And then he still hasn't gotten the issue resolved. And then what if that leads to longer term damage? And they cannot afford to put his long term health at risk for this Red Sox team because they absolutely need him for the future. But Alex Cora did explain that he hasn't been getting any worse than where he was at early on in the season, but he's not getting any better either. And that's the huge key. He did tell Devers to let him know if he needs to take two or three days off. And he knows they have to take care of him, which is the smart thing to do. But here is the question. Should Alex Cora and the Red Sox throw the season in the towel? Because with where they're at in the wild card right now, logistically and statistically, it is not impossible for them to make the playoffs. They have not been eliminated from playoff contention yet, but they are running out of time as there are only a few more weeks left in the regular season. So the question becomes, does that mean that they throw it in the towel and say, okay, we're shutting down Raphael Devers for the rest of the season so that we can conserve his longer term health and not have him play the rest of this year? Because if they don't put him into any more games this year, it'll allow him more time to rest and recover and hopefully get that shoulder healed so that he's 100% and good to go next year before they risk that long-term damage that I was talking about. But if Cora and company decide to shut him down, it sends a message to the team that they've given up on the season. And from a team morale standpoint, that's not going to help these guys to feel more confident about making a playoff push. They have to know that Cora and the organization are on their side and believe in them in order to make a playoff push. So the problem with shutting down Devers now would be that that would basically say that the Red Sox are giving up on any chance they had of making the postseason because they feel like it's not realistic at this point. And that would be a huge bummer, but at the same time, it very well could be the case. And I think we're going to have to see what happens over the next couple of days here because say they get swept by the Mets, unlikely, but say they do, then they pretty much can close the door on the playoffs. They can kiss that hope goodbye of landing one of those wild card spots. And then I think it would be safe to make a definitive decision on, okay, we're going to shut down Devers because I feel like the team would kind of start to get the drift at that point that the wild card might not be in the cards for this Red Sox team. However, if they win the series against the Mets and they go on to continue to win series that could be huge for them because the White Sox coming up, that should be three wins. Now, granted, they struggled against the White Sox the last time they faced them. They split a four-game series. 
So they absolutely would need to sweep the White Sox in order to get themselves back on track in the wild card race. But if they can't score, they will not be able to do that. But if they are able to turn things around the rest of this week and into next week, then maybe they keep Devers playing on a daily basis and they can feel like, okay, we need him because we are making a playoff push. It really all depends on what happens over these next few days. I think it would be premature to shut him down immediately right now. But if they continue to lose games over these next few days and even leading into next week, then their playoff hopes at that point are pretty much gone to the point where I would say it's safe to shut Devers down. So I don't feel like right now today is the best time to make that move to shut down Raphael Devers. But if things go south over these next few days, then it would be safe to do that. But when they mathematically still have a shot and they are only a few games out because of the Royals and Twins having lost some games in this time that the Red Sox have been struggling. I don't want them to shut down Devers and give the team a sense of, oh, the front office and Alex Cora are giving up on us. So why should we even try anymore? So don't send that message now. If the chances are extremely unlikely, then I understand that. And I understand saying, okay, here's what we're going to do we are going to rest Devers for the rest of the season so we can conserve him for next year. But it all depends on how this team performs and they have to perform in order for Cora and company to feel confident in their ability to make the postseason. And that all starts with the offense getting back on track, which I'm going to be talking a little bit about next. If you're looking for cheaper tickets to things, Game Time has you covered. Trust me, I get it. Tickets are so ridiculously expensive now for any sort of sporting event or live show, concert, you name it. It's just unbelievable and through the roof, some of these prices. But Game Time will give you reasonable prices and in good seats, too. I'm actually going tonight to the Red Sox game at City Field, and I bought tickets through game time, and I am sitting very close to the Red Sox dugout, which will be a lot of fun. So I recommend game time for all of your ticket needs because I got these tickets for a very reasonable price, and I looked at other ticket vendors to compare, and it was a significant price difference. So if you're looking to save some money on tickets, game time is the home for you. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-L-B for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Ever since I discovered this app, I've been more inclined to go to more and more events, so that'll be you in a matter of time once you download the app. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen today. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On MLB podcast. Host Paul Sullivan, a.k.a. Sully, is here daily to provide national expertise with his trademark humor to help you get ready for the MLB playoffs here in the dog days of summer. Prepare for the Fall Classic with Sully, who has it all covered every single day on Locked On MLB, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Sully is so funny. I've done a couple crossover shows with him and I really enjoyed it. So you should check out his show right after this. The Boston Red Sox have been struggling lately, especially on offense. And Raphael Devers, a player who is one of the cornerstone pieces of the future for this Red Sox team, has not been able to get things going offensively since he came back from his little rest where he wasn't in the lineup for a few games. And Alex Cora was doing that because he obviously is still having that nagging shoulder issue that he's been dealing with since spring training. And there is a question of whether they decide to shut him down for the rest of the season. Time will tell. I don't think they should do that right now because it would be too premature. However, I could see them doing that in the next week or so if the Red Sox don't turn things around quickly. But not only is Devers struggling, 
But the Red Sox offense as a whole is struggling. Over the last two weeks, Jaron Duran is batting 365, but everyone else is batting 187. Legitimately, there is nobody on this Red Sox team that is hitting well right now. And when the Red Sox took their four to one loss on Monday against the Mets, Duran went one for four in the game. His batting average is now up to a 294 with a 352 on base percentage and 527 slugging. He has consistently been one of the best hitters this Boston Red Sox team has had to offer this year. Just very consistent and has stayed locked in and has given 100% all the time whenever he's out there for this Red Sox team. So I just always love and appreciate Duran as a player and what he brings to the table. But the Red Sox only had six hits in the game, and they could not score runs for the life of them. I mean, it was so frustrating. They left six on base and only went one for four with runners in scoring position. Duran, of course, recorded the one RBI for this Red Sox team on Monday night. I mean, they were abysmal. They had plenty of opportunities to drive in runs with base runners and they couldn't do it. I mean, the strikeouts and just completely being asleep at the plate and what it came across is that they were just going through the motions offensively is very much not good. And this Red Sox team has had a strikeout problem all year this year. They have generated tons of swings and misses, but it's unbelievable to me how much this offense has changed over the last few days. Because even though they were recording lots of swings and misses and striking out a good amount this year, they showed good plate discipline and they were able to challenge opposing pitchers, take pitches when they should have, and they were at least running up pitch counts. But in the game on Monday night, I mean, you had Yoshida on a 3-1 count who should have taken the next pitch but did not and flied out. And it's those little things of having that knowledge at the plate of, okay, I'm in a hitter's count right now, so I should take the next pitch because even if it's a strike, I have a pitch to work with. But if it's a ball, I get on base. And not trying to play hero ball. I feel like this team sometimes gets into a habit offensively of feeling like they have to hit one over the fence every time they're at the plate when there's runners on base. And it goes on for a little bit of time where there are a lot of players who fall under that category of feeling like, oh, you know, I have to hit a home run right here so that I can get this team back on track and maybe we take the lead or at least tie the game. And when this offense gets into that mode of just trying to go for the home run ball every time, that's what generates more lazy at bats and not thinking clearly and not being smart at the plate. But I've seen a Red Sox offense for a lot of this season that has been able to be patient at the plate, not focus too much on playing hero ball and just doing their part to have a productive at bat where they're advancing a base runner. And that's an offense that can be scary good. That's an offense that opposing pitchers have trouble against, the one that can pile on tons of runs and take advantage of mistakes. Because we've seen the Red Sox do that plenty of times this year. And my worry in all of this is that the Red Sox are getting back into old habits that they have had in their heads. And it's helping other teams to feel like they can blow past this lineup. And that's not good at all because I've seen a lineup that can crush baseballs. They can hit them over the fence for sure, but they also know how to play small ball and they can hit singles and doubles and they can go out there and just absolutely mash. So I feel like if this team can find its identity offensively again from what has worked for them for a lot of this year, then they can show what their potential is, at least for the future, if not right now. Because the starting pitching generally 
has been a lot better than it was since right after the All-Star break when they were struggling a lot. They have certainly shown some growth in that regard. And even the bullpen, I mean, the pen has blown lots of games for this Red Sox team this year for sure. But I mean, take Josh Winkowski, for example, who pitched three innings on Monday night and gave up zero earned runs. He struck out four in that time and he looked solid. He was cruising through and legitimately had a good outing coming in in relief of Bayo. And it was huge for the Red Sox because Winkowski has been struggling a lot this year. And the fact that he was able to finish the game after Bayo came out was able to help conserve some other arms in the bullpen. And little things like that, allowing the bullpen to be able to rest, can help put them in a situation the next day to succeed when they step back out onto the mound. So little things like that work. And if the pitching staff overall has been able to regroup and get itself back on track, then I don't see why the offense can't do the same. Now, I truly am not concerned about the offense. I feel like this is just a bit of a slump that this team is going through offensively as a whole right now. This offense has been too good this year for me to write it off right now and say they're doomed for the rest of the season on offense. I do feel like their bats are going to come alive again very quickly. Hopefully tonight when I am there in person, that would be ideal. I don't see a lot of big stints like this where the offense is slumping. And it's very rare that the majority of the offense as a whole is on a cold streak. And that does tend to happen sometimes during a long season where the offense just isn't clicking and they just don't have it at that particular moment. And I feel like that's what's going on here with this offense right now. But I am pointing to the offense as the reason the Red Sox have been losing lots of games over the last week or so, because this is now the third game in a row on Monday night where the Red Sox only scored one run, and that's an issue. And yes, you can blame the errors. You can blame the manager. You can blame you know, certain pitchers who are going out there and not getting the job done. But ultimately, the offense needs to do their job too. And their job is to go out there, string together hits, and get themselves on base and find ways to score. And finding a way to score does not always have to include the home run ball. And I just feel like the Red Sox have gotten back into that bad habit of not finding their pitches and just trying to go through the motions. And it's very apparent and very evident. So Alex Cora needs to have a serious heart-to-heart with this team about the effort and the fact that they are better than they are playing right now, especially offensively. But if they don't figure things out ASAP on the offensive end, then we can call this series a wrap in the near future here because, for one, if they can't beat the White Sox, they just don't deserve simply to be in the postseason. And for two, this offense is too good to me to feel like this is going to continue. So the offense will get back on track, but can they put everything together at the same time? That has been the whole issue with this Red Sox team this season is certain things will click and then other things will fall back. And then that will get back on track. And then another aspect of their game will fall apart again. And they just have not been able to put all of it together all at once this season. So hopefully some of the guys coming up here to be part of the Red Sox future will help with that problem. What does that future look like? I'm going to be talking about that next. You've heard me talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. Just visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sports book. My fiance has gotten so addicted to FanDuel lately. He's betting on all different kinds of sports on there, and it's won him lots of money, which is great for me because we have a wedding in a month that we have to pay for. So it 
it works out great. I very much approve of him doing the sports betting thing, and it can change your life too. So head to FanDuel immediately. The Red Sox are coming off of a very disappointing and, quite frankly, boring 4-1 to loss against the Mets on Monday night. Brian Bayo went five innings, giving up seven hits and four earned runs. And then Josh Winkowski was able to finish the game, and he was impressive. Looked better than a lot of his outings this season, which was good. But overall, this team isn't hitting right now. And the players who typically contribute like Yoshida who had been on a hot streak is slipping back into a cold streak now and you have guys like Devers who is dealing with the nagging pain and hasn't been able to make lots of hard contact lately which is unfortunate Tristan Casas hasn't really been on the upside of his offensive game lately. So you name key players who just aren't stepping up to the plate and performing the way that they need to be performing offensively. And it is really starting to feel like their playoff chances are slipping further and further away because of the fact that they have not been able to gain ground on the teams ahead of them that aren't playing well right now. And it's starting to be too late for them to do that. So as we sit here and try to be optimistic and hope that they can somehow figure things out, especially on offense and get the bats moving again and actually take advantage with runners on base like they haven't been doing as of late, we at least can look forward to the future, even if they do miss the playoffs this year. Now, this season has very much been up and down, and there were lots of things that people were unsure about related to this Boston Red Sox team and how the season would go. And I think they surprised a lot of people, especially right before the All-Star break, the month of June they had, and even into July. They were playing very solid baseball, playing like a true playoff team. And I don't think a lot of people could have said that about the Boston Red Sox earlier on in the season. So from that standpoint, they have surprised a lot of people. And a lot of that has to do with the development of some of the younger players, like Jaron Duran, Willier Abreu, Sadam Rafaela, even Tristan Casas a little bit. He unfortunately was injured until very recently, but just being able to observe from the dugout and learn more and more and take it all in and is now able to come back and be a piece of the future that can hopefully play very good baseball at first base for this Boston Red Sox team. And from the pitching staff, I mean, Cutter Crawford has been disappointing as of late, but has been able overall to put a pretty decent season together for himself. So what's his future going to look like in Boston? Justin Slayton has impressed a lot out of the bullpen. And David Hamilton, from a speed standpoint, has been able to really emerge as an important piece on the base paths to help generate some runs for the Red Sox. So there's a nice core of players there that we as Red Sox fans can look to and look forward to in the future because we can say, okay, these guys here can help us make a playoff push this year if we still have a shot. But even if we don't, they are going to be pieces that will help us moving forward. And if you look at the Red Sox right now and you think about 2025, if they go out and do some serious work to the pitching staff in the offseason, imagine how good this team can be with this young core that they've established in the infield, in the outfield, guys who have a ton of talent who can come and contribute later on. I mean, it's going to be a very competitive team in 2025 and beyond as long as they adjust the pitching situation accordingly and put themselves back in a place to be able to be contenders. But not only do they have this young core on the major league roster that will be here to contribute down the road, but they also have their big four prospects, as they say, in Roman Anthony, Kyle Teal, Marcelo Meyer, and Christian Campbell. Christian Campbell and Roman Anthony have made quite the impression in AAA this year. They've made lots of noise, and neither of them has been in AAA that long. They both got called up recently. And if they continue to play the way that they are, there is no doubt that those two will get a major league call up at some point next year to be able to showcase their skills and utilize everything that they've learned throughout being in the minors to apply it to their game at the major league level. So I'm very excited about those two. I mean, that's a high-end outfield prospect and a very high-end infield prospect that can come in and collectively help this Red Sox team out. 
Then you look at Kyle Teal, who definitely still needs some work in AAA, but has the potential to succeed at the major league level a lot due to his speed as a catcher. You don't see that type of speed very often, but it's something that could put him ahead of other people of his caliber and give him the edge over other catchers in the league because he has that speed and he also has the very solid baseball IQ at the plate. So he's very aware when he's hitting of the types of pitches he should be swinging at. So I think Kyle Teal is an emerging superstar for this Red Sox organization. Marcelo Meyer, we definitely have to keep an eye on his injury history as somebody who has shown that he isn't always able to consistently stay on the field. So that's something that I'm interested in following throughout his career journey is is Marcelo Meyer somebody who is capable of staying on the field, somebody that we can rely on and trust to be able to go out there on a consistent basis and play his position without being placed on the IL constantly? So I'm definitely keeping an eye on that situation. But if you look at a team that has Kyle Teal, Roman Anthony, and Christian Campbell on it, that'll help this team to be very competitive. And hopefully Devers getting shoulder surgery potentially in the offseason could help. That has not been confirmed. That's just something that I feel like could benefit him if he goes and gets that address this offseason so that he doesn't have to deal with it anymore and can get to the bottom of it and then come back and be the superstar that we know he can be for this Red Sox team. Then you'll have Trevor Story coming back, who, yes, has been abysmal at the plate in his short time in a Boston Red Sox uniform so far, but he has the defense to be able to be a key contributor for this Red Sox team, and he will help clean up a lot of the defensive miscues that they are making in the infield right now. So that is going to make a difference for this Red Sox team, and if you look at Trevor Story next to Christian Campbell in the middle infield, that's a good combination until Marcelo Meyer is able to get called up, which might not be for a bit. I think he's going to need at least a full season in AAA in 2025 before the Red Sox can even have the conversation about calling him up because he needs to be ready and he needs to get the exposure in AAA when he can and be able to prove himself and prove that he deserves to be called up to the majors because they can't rush him up. They've made this very clear that they want to do things right with him as he is one of the top prospects in baseball. And if the Red Sox want to be able to get the most out of him when he does come up to the majors, they need to do things the right way and take their time with his injuries and make sure he's recovering the right way so that he can get back out onto the field and have a very long career in a Boston Red Sox uniform. But Trevor Story will be the guy in the interim. Hopefully he can figure things out offensively when he comes back, which may be soon because he is rehabbing in Worcester right now. Liam Hendricks is nearing his return that could legitimately be this weekend against the White Sox because that was his goal originally. Only a few more days until we know for sure if he will be returning for the weekend, which would be super exciting for the Red Sox bullpen. But Trevor Story, if he can figure things out offensively, would at least be a good interim guy for Marcelo Meyer because we know he can play defense and he can play that position effectively. What I am interested in seeing, though, is what they want to do with Rafaela because Rafaela plays a very good defensive center field, but he has also made some very nice plays when playing shortstop for the Red Sox. So if they feel like they need him more at shortstop because they have an overload in the outfield, then maybe they have story play second base and they keep Rafaela at shortstop. And then it would be a little bit of a roadblock for Christian Campbell to eventually get his call up which would be unfortunate for him, but they could try to find a way to work him in if there's an injury so that he can get exposure to playing in the majors. But it kind of depends on the roster reshuffling that the Red Sox end up doing this off season. Who's here to stay? Who are they going to move? Because they definitely need to get some pitching. That means spending some money in free agency on a high caliber pitching talent, which I'm not seeing actually happening. I'll believe it when I see it. So hopefully they do that, but they also could utilize the trade market if there's a guy they really like and they can trade some of their prospects with high value. So 
they are going to be doing a lot of things this offseason, and there are a lot of moving parts. So it's hard to say who's going to play where and what types of opportunities some of these guys in AAA are going to get. But in summary, this is a very bright future ahead here for this Boston Red Sox team. And it's only a matter of time before they are quickly back in contention and back to being a team that fans can be excited about watching on a daily basis. Because if a team goes out there and can't score a lot of nights, it creates for very boring baseball. And I, in particular, want to see exciting baseball. And as a diehard Boston Red Sox fan, I just want to see them succeed. So bright future for sure. The Red Sox are very much trying to build that future and just create that core that will stick around for years to come to help hopefully bring the Red Sox some more championship hardware because it certainly feels like it's been too long, even though it really has not compared to what some other fan bases have gone through with their favorite teams. But I'm excited to see some of these younger players that are down at AAA, what they can do when they get called up to the majors eventually and how they contribute to this Red Sox team. Because at the end of the day, the playoff hopes are just looking less and less likely by the day. I'm not going to say I gave up on the Red Sox because, again, mathematically, they are not eliminated and it's not over until it's over. But they just have a lot of issues right now that can't all be solved at the same time, it seems. And they just aren't able to put everything together right now. So until they do that, they're going to have a really hard time with securing a playoff spot. But You know, that's Red Sox baseball for you. Got to live through the ups, got to live through the downs if you are a diehard fan like myself. As always, just try your best to keep the faith. Hopefully they bounce back tonight. As always, go Red Sox, and I will catch you on the flip side.